casing of the inverter. So this is how it would show up to you if you purchased one. Pulls out like that. Comes with your manual. Plenty of packaging on it. This is the front of the GPSW 1500 watt inverter. We have a on off switch, AC output and wattage, a voltage indicator for how many volts are coming in, a power save light, three fault lights, two AC outlet and it's a GFCI protected outlet and then of course our UL and CUL listing stamp on the front. It's very rare to find an uh, inverter with this wattage that has UL and CUL listing on it. So this is the back side of the GPSW 1500 watt inverter. As you can see we have our positive and negative inputs that would come from the battery. We have two uh, thermostatically controlled fans. We have an input range of 11 volts to up to 16 volts DC. All right, and underneath the positive and negative DC input, we can see that there's a RS-232 plug, and that plug is actually where we hook up the GPSW remote, uh, which can remotely turn the inverter on and off if you've tucked the inverter away. Then next to that, you can see the chassis ground lug. This is a lug you would use if you weren't installing it in a mobile application, if it was in a permanent cottage we would install it to earth ground. This is the side of the power inverter where we'd access the dip switches. There's really only a couple dip switches you want to access and those are the ones that adjust the output voltage of the inverter. The output of the inverter can be adjusted from 100 volts all the way up to 120 volts. Today we're taking a look at the Go Power Inverter DC install kit. Uh, this is kit number three. There's four kits and depending on which inverter you choose uh, will determine which kit we're going to use. In this case, we're installing a 1500 watt pure sign inverter, so we're going to go with the GP DC Kit 3. One good tip here when you're installing the 1500 watt inverter uh, from GoPower, the cable kit comes with lugs on both sides of the cable, so we actually need to cut off this lug so we can go into the bare wire terminal that comes with the 1500. Now that both connections, a positive and negative, have been stripped, I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver, a very small flathead, to loosen the set screw in the lug here. Then we're going to simply put our bare wire in, and then we're going to tighten it down. Make sure you get that real tight, and it's actually a great idea to go back after a couple weeks and check that connection after your RV has been bouncing around and make sure that's still nice and tight in there. Now our connections are all done here. We're going to go down to the battery. Installing the negative connection first is usually the best idea. It will avoid having a very large spark when you connect uh, both connections on. So we'll start with the negative. Simply connects onto our battery post. And we're going to tighten that nut down. That's everything we need to do on this side. Now we're going to install the positive connection to the battery, but before we do that, we need to select our location for the inverter fuse. We want to have that inverter fuse within two feet of the battery positive. Then we're simply going to cut this wire to go inside the, the two sides of the fuse here. I do encourage that wherever we decide to put this fuse, that you use the screws and put them in before you put the cable in, because of course once our cable's in, it's going to be very hard to, to put those screws in. So this is where we're going to put it, and now I'll cut the positive wire and put, do our connections. Now I'm going to just make sure I got the correct length. I'm going to mark my cut just with my finger. Then we'll use our wire cutter and make our cut. At this point we have both ends of the cable spliced now. We're going to take our 5 16 Allen, open that up, Put the wire in and just simply tighten it down. Then I do recommend using the other splice end, putting that in before we've connected the lug to the battery. Slide that in. Tighten that side down. Make sure everything's real tight, and again, I would check all these connections about two weeks after the initial install. Now we're going to connect to the battery. 
uh, battery positive post with our lug. Now we're already connected to the inverter, so we're going to see a spark here. And it's nothing out of the norm, it's just the capacitor is filling up inside the inverter. Sometimes you get a spark, sometimes you won't. See, we got one there. Simply tighten down these connections here, and we're ready to turn the inverter on. Of course, the last step here, if this is the fuse is mounted uh, in our convenient spot here, you're just going to clip over the protective case, and that's so we don't drop anything metal across and end up having an unfortunate short there. Now that we've connected the inverter to the battery, we're going to simply turn it on using that on-off switch we talked about earlier. The inverter is going to come on. It does a quick flash for startup. I want to now show you how to put the inverter in and out of what we call power save mode. There's a small light that would illuminate when the, power, the inverter is in power save mode. In order for us to turn it into that mode, because right now it's currently not illuminated, we would turn the inverter off, switch it back on, and as it's loading, quickly turn it off and turn it back on again. We should see the green light illuminated now for power save mode. Power save mode basically is used when I don't want the inverter on at all times. I only want it to come on when I have a specific load that I've turned on. And it's usually your smallest load that you'd like to be running off the inverter. And it just saves power. Alternatively, to take the power inverter out of power save, we will turn the inverter off, turn it back on as it's starting up, quickly turn it off, and then back on again and we should see that light is no longer on. So that's how you put the inverter in and out of power safe mode. get a lot of calls from people uh, who just don't seem to understand the GFCI outlet. Um, the GFCI will trip anytime it sees a difference between neutral and ground. This is just to protect you if you're out in the, the rain or anything using a tool uh, so it will immediately trip and it wouldn't hurt you or harm you if uh, there was some type of short. Uh, but it does cause a lot of issues with people thinking there's no output power from their inverter. So your first key on a 1500 watt with their GFCI is there's a green LED light that's illuminated when there is power going through the circuit. I'm going to hit the test button on here. And that's going to trip it. You're going to notice that light is no longer illuminated. So that tells me that this breaker is tripped in here. And all I do is I click the reset button to make sure I have power coming out of the outlet again. This is something to try if you're experiencing no output from your 1500. Definitely hit the reset button. Sometimes you have to press it a little harder than you might think. And now you're going to see power continue to come out of the outlet.